All right, so we want to look on multiplexers. And based on the name here, we said that the short form multiplexers is MUX. Now, uh, multiplexer. A minute. Okay. So, a multiplexer is basically a digital electronic. Um, so it utilizes signal and it is used in communication systems. So for the multiplexers, you will always have several input signals, but you have one output. The for each multiplexer you have inputs, and the inputs are typical typically two to the power of n, which is the where n represents your selection. So in the example now, you're seeing where we have a um, 8 by 1 MUX, where it is that you have 8 inputs, but you have 1 output. Now, what you should always think about is what will give you 8. 2 to the power of what will give you 8? 2 to the power of what will give you 16? 2 to the power of what will give you 2? whatever that is, that is going to be the number of selections that you're going to have. So the selections is always whatever is going to give you the number of inputs. Again, so if you're asked to draw a 16 by 1 MUX, it means that you're going to have 16 inputs, 1 output, right? But you need to work out now what number when mod, um working out the powers table. So two to the power of what will give you 16, right? And that is going to be the number of selections that you have, which would be four, right? If you're being asked to draw a two by one mux, then you know that you have two inputs and you'll have one output and you have one selection line. That is the basis there. So for your multiplexers, this is how it normally, typically works. So you will have inputs. And as I said before, your inputs, um, total input is two to the power of n. So if you're given the number of selections, then you will have to work out the inputs. If you're given the inputs, then you'll have to work out the selection. So if I tell you that you have a multiplexer, which has three selections, then you know that your input is going to be 2 to the power of 3, which is going to give you 8. Always work that part out. It also has selection lines. Now, these lines is basically going to determine which input is selected. Um, The number of, the number, so let's say you have a selection line, which is S0. S0 selection is going to select a particular input, which is going to give a specific output, right? So you have selection lines, and the selection line will determine which input is basically selected. You will have output. Um, for your multiplexer, it is always one output. Multiple inputs, one output, right? So the output now depends on what is selected and what the input signal is. I don't know if I came. Um, we have rarely seen where it asks you to do like an IPO chart. I know that they'll ask you to draw it and basically just basically explain what a multiplexer is. So you will have your multiplexer. So for your multiplexer, as I said before, you have input, you have your selection lines, you have output, and you have what we call control logic. And the control logic is the selection lines that basically control how the circuit works, whether it is that you get a high or you get a low for output. And that is it. Now your multiplexers are typically used in digital systems. So when you think about data transmission, think about multiplexers. This is where you can have um, multiple data being streamed into a, like a, a single stream line. For example, um, I can have 
on one platform, for example, I can utilize a Facebook, I can have uh, my YouTube and my TikTok. So I have multiple inputs there where it is that there, my data is being streamed across multiple platforms all at the same time, right? But it is going to be through one selection or one streaming organization. Um, memory address in your computer system that also utilizes multipl multiplexers and it's basically used to select um, specific memory locations when it is that you're either storing or you're reading data from your memory. The ALU in your in in all most computer systems, all computer systems also uses um multiplexers. So what it does, it helps to basically um differentiate between data inputs so that it can perform the different operations. And those would be like the mathematical operations, such as your addition, your subtraction, your multiplication, and your division. Control units also utilize um, multiplexers. Multiplexers are using control units to select different signals. And I would have said this before, your signals would depend on the input. So depending on the input, sometimes if the input is high, then you're going to get a, a, a low output. Um, if the output is low, depending on the selection that is it, that it is on, you probably still get a high or you may get a low. So in essence, now your multiplexers, they play crucial role as it relates to digital systems. So it provides flexibility and efficiency in terms of managing data streams or data signals, basically. Um... As I said before, this this is probably very light because normally they just ask you to draw your multiplexers. So in this case, considering the 8 to 1 multiplexer above, show the input. So if you notice now you have the selections, your selection is always going to start at 0. You can also label, instead of having A, B, C, D there, you can also label it as I0. I1, I2, I3, I4, I5, I6, I7. You know, you wouldn't go to 8 because you would have started at 0. So your selection must also start at 0 and your inputs must also start at 0. So if you notice here, we have, um, we have this jumble. So we have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Um, for your selection. Normally, it is split. Then you have the alternative. And then you have the high, three lows, and then two, basically there. So here it is now. It says, now consider the following table that gives the values of ABC. So... Here it is that we have 0, 0, 1 as your selection line, and these would be the inputs. So we have 1, 1, 0, 0. Basically, these would be mm, somewhat... These would be somewhat the same, depending on what you're doing. And as I said... For your output, your output is very much dependent on the selection and the, the input that is selected. Now, it's rare when I say for CAPE that they ask you to do this. But you can analyze this table and basically see when it is that you would get a high. All right, so it, the question here says draw a four by one mox. So you have a four input, one output as per the usual. And as I said before, there was this thing in R. So you would draw just 
a regular box once it is that you are going to draw your mocks. Ensure that you label within it. So inside of it, you would put four by one and you put box. So if it's a four by one, it is two to the power of n which will be equal to four. So now you need to think what times two um, raised to the power of two will give you four, which is two. So your selection line, which is right here, would be two selection line. And you start that as S zero. And you also have S one. Then your inputs is going to be four. Four inputs, and you label those so you will have I. Oh my god, I zero, I one, I two, um. I I I three. And then you would have one open. The open can be to the bottom or it can be over here to the right. Um you can label your output as output, or you can name it as F, you can name it as X. So same thing. A two by one mux is going to have one selection, two input, one output. Your 16 by 1 mux that is going to have 16 input, 4 selection, 1 output, right? So for the multiplexer, you need 